Okay, so we're 10 seconds in. Yeah, I should not have to type anything else now, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, just to give everybody a quick rundown of what we're doing today, we are making blanket squares for a friend of mine um, from my online knitting and crochet guild. Their spouse was just diagnosed recently with cancer, and of course radiation treatments do uh, have an effect on the body. They tend to make you feel colder a lot, so we are, the whole guild is pitching in and making one to two blanket squares each. We're going to send them all to another of the members who's going to put them all together into a blanket and then send it onward to the friend who is in need. So because it is a uh, Discworld themed knitting and crochet guild, we're all doing things related to uh, the writings of Terry Pratchett. And I chose two, two blanket squares. I'm going to be doing one in honor of Two Flower, who is a character that is primarily in the very first two books of the Discworld series, The Color of Magic and can't remember the name of the second one. The Light Fantastic, I think, is what it is. Um, and then I will also be doing one for Death of Rats, uh, who I affectionately call the Grim Squeaker. <clears throat> I'm also um, I'm also doing my stream from a different location. We've mentioned before that I would be house-sitting for a friend, so I am at their house. Uh, colors are a bit off because the lighting is different than it is in my house, but I promise this blanket square, these blanket squares are going to look great. I'm going to switch over to the main thing, and these are what we're going to be using for the two flower blanket square. It is Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Worsted Weight. Um, the colors are, this one is Semolina. This one is, I think it was called white, just white. Um, and this one is gray heather, or no, haze heather. Um, and then when we work on the death of rats, I've also got coal. But for right now, we're going to focus on two flowers square, because it's actually going to be the easier of the two. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a base square in white, and then I will be using the haze heather and the semolina to make uh, petals that are then going to be sewn onto that base square. All right. So, as always, first step is finding the yarn tail from amongst the yarn. For blanket squares, I don't generally need a stitch marker um, or a row counter because it's just you go until you find the end of the row and then you continue. Um, what I will need is to make a measurement to see 8 inches because that's the goal is 8 inches for the squares so that hopefully they will all be the same size which makes it much easier to sew things together. Um, where I run into a predicament is making certain that things are eight inches. Um, I did get this handy little notebook that is for planning out crochet projects. Uh, the thing is, I think it's all done in centimeters, not inches, so this will be fine. Or maybe it's done in millimeters. I think it's actually done in millimeters. Maybe. Heck if I know. Eh, okay. It's got this lovely little grid that shows you the size. But heck, if I can figure out. What those are. Oh, 
also this is um, it has dates on it well it's not dated but it is laid out by months so I can't really use it until spring or uh, until next January when I can start using it I mean I could use it but I am stubborn like that and I'm basically going nope nope not getting used until I mean aside from as a reference guide okay we'll just get start and we're going to start with a basic chain. So I've shown you guys magic loop before, but I haven't actually done any chains. So first step of your chain is a knot. And I just loop over, then grab the yarn and pull it through because you're making a slip knot. Ta-da, slip knot, basic. Okay, you put your yarn or your hook through the knot, you pull it a little tighter, and you grab your yarn and pull it through. This is a very basic chain. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Okay. I do not think that's 8 inches. good rule of thumb when measuring things is this is about an inch so one two three four yeah I was right it's about that's about um, six inches you know hold on I'm gonna put you guys in be right back um, I'm at an artist house. Surely she has a... Oh. There is a tape measure right next to me, so... So I was very, uh, very close to spot on with that uh, estimate of six inches. I'm just a shade under six. So I'm gonna go a little bit more. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. Try this again. Just like this. All right, so I'm going to do two more stitches forty one. 42. That should get us right to where we need to be. Okay, so that's going to fall. So we're going to just okay. So I didn't need those two stitches. That gets me just a tiny bit too far. So pull out one. A lot too. Okay. So good to know. In my uh, hand, 
40 stitches come out, comes out to 8 inches. So, alright, now we're going to do a turn. So this is going to go 1. That's called a turning chain. Now, when you're, one, when you're working back into a row of crochet, if you want all of the edges to be neat and tidy, what you'll do is you'll turn your work and then you're going to crochet into the underside of those V's. So the V's will be on top and beneath them alright, I forgot that all of the Andes tends to be a bit splitty. Um, okay, so beneath them there will be the two lines for the V and then on the bottom there will be one bump. We're going to crochet into those bumps. So and so you go under that single loop for the bump and grab that and pull through one so one and again we're going to try for 40 two So I'm going to be counting on these two rows, and then after that I shouldn't need to. Um, it's easier to crochet into the Vs than it is the bumps. Nine. So I'm, all, I'm just counting on the bumps to make certain that I don't miss a stitch. Ten. Six.
39 and 40. Okay, we are right on track. And so, a little bit about Two Flower. This is who the Blanket Square is inspired by. He is one of the main characters in, again, uh, The Light or The Color of Magic, and I think the name of the book is The Light Fantastic. He's a tourist to the main city in uh, Discworld, which is Ankhmore Pork. And he, in his back at home, is what he uh, explains to everyone in the, uh, in the city as a Insur Ants agent. Uh, now, I'm pretty sure that uh, if you're from our world and recognize those words, he's an insurance agent. Uh, but he's this genuinely friendly, cheerful guy who is completely unaware of the danger he keeps putting himself in. Um, he just does not realize that you probably uh, shouldn't walk up to the mouth of a dragon while taking a photo. Um, so he's played in the Color of Magic movie by Sean Astin, who really plays up the tourist uh, ideas. And in the movie, he has this amazing shirt that is um, off-white, or pretty close to this shade, with big, bright flowers on it that are pretty close to these shades, and there was a third flower, but since it's a, his name is Two Flower, I'm just doing the two colors for two flowers. Um, so, it, it's, he does such a, John, Sean Astin, and by the way, I'm not prone to remembering the names of actors, so me actually remembering that he was played by Sean Astin really shows uh, how impressive the performance was because the actor's name stood out to me. There are very few actors who do that. Um, okay. So, so, but yeah, we're going to be doing the two flowers from his shirt to simulate the two flower of his name. This square will need to be, like I said, 8 inches long. It'll also need to be 8 inches tall. So since there were about 40 stitches to get the 8 inch length, we're going to need about 40 rows to get the 8 inch height. Now, I'm not actually going to be counting the rows on this because there's a nifty trick with blanket squares. To make certain that they're the that they're an actual square and therefore the same height and width, all you have to do is when you think you're done, you just fold that blanket square from corner to corner, and if the sides match at the corners, then you know you've got the same height and the same width. I use that trick just about any time that I make a blanket square. Um, I've got a blanket that has been 
on my hook for literal years. Um, it's a scrap blanket and it's kind of a sampler so it's multiple squares made of multiple yarns made with multiple different stitch types. Some are double crochet, some are treble crochet, uh, some are bobble stitches, some are uh, basket weave stitches, just all sorts of different types with the goal being that the types are all um, well, I have forgotten words. Common issue for me. Okay, I'm going to count real quick because I can't remember if I need... Uh, no, I do need to go into this one. I forgot. Okay. Still going to count real quick just to make certain, but... Perfect. Okay, so we're going to do our turning chain. That's just a single crochet that you do to make it one row taller. And then we go right back down the rows. So under the V pull through the two loops, and here we go again. Okay. So, but the, the crochet blanket that I'm working on that is primarily uh, different types, I'm calling it my Waiting for Godot blanket. Um, in the play waiting for Godot, there are two men who are waiting together for someone who is apparently named Godot. Godot never shows. I think some versions of the play that our adaptations have them eventually uh, leave the stage and then Godot shows, but it's basically them t waiting an interminable amount of time for Godot to appear, and him not making his appearance. Um, there are some who say it is a metaphor for death, some say it's a metaphor for the afterlife, which I guess would be similar, uh, some who say that it's just, you know, a metaphor for nothing at all, and it's just a play in which two people wait for ages. See who okay. that rather annoying noise is my chat channel going off over and over and over to alert people or to let people know that something new has been posted, which is great, except you know, I'm trying to do things. There we go. Okay. We have now been alerted to all of the posts. Turns out that one of the uh, streamers that I try very hard not to compete with is doing an impromptu Sunday stream and is currently uh, streaming that. If you are one of his followers, his fans, you should absolutely go watch him, not me. Um, he is currently streaming uh, Turtles for or Turtle Turtles for Turtles, which is a charity stream. They're painting um, crud. I forgot the word. They are painting uh, turtle minis, and any money raised is getting donated to. Uh, a charity that helps to try and protect the sea turtles in the oceans. So, very noble cause. Mine is also a noble cause, but I'm not earning money from this stream that's going to be donated. So, it doesn't matter if I have, you know, 20 followers or, or 20 viewers or one viewer. I'm not 
you know, trying for affiliate or anything like that. So, I don't care if people are watching me or not. I'm doing this mostly for me. Okay, so. Um, let's see. Back to what we were talking about. What were we talking about? I don't remember. That's helpful. Okay, so. Um, if you are crocheting blanket squares, by the way, don't feel weird if they curl up like this. That's normal. Uh, you can actually fix that by... Some people do what is called blocking. Uh, since this is wool, I could do that. Blocking is where you soak the... Uh, the wool or the yarn after it has been crafted into what you want then you put it down on a mat and you pin the corners so that when it dries it is all the correct size and shape um, most of the people I know who do blocking are knitters but I know you can do it for crochet too um, I never block anything because I just don't. I'm a terrible crafter, I guess. Um, what I do if I've got squares like this that are folding up and I don't want them to is I set them down on a table and I put a heavy book on them and just leave them that way for however long and then eventually they go, okay, we'll just stay this shape. And they do. Um, I think for, if I were making something like a sweater, then blocking would be rather vital uh, because of the sheer size of a sweater. You generally don't have books as big as you have sweaters. So that would be one way, but for a blanket square, nah. Blocking just isn't something that I feel the need to do. Um, this wool, or this yarn by the way, is super wash, which means that it is actual wool, but it has been treated with a chemical treatment that makes it so it won't felt, which means that it is machine washable. Um, I'm fairly certain that the uh, recipient of this blanket won't worry about machine washing because they are another fiber crafter who likes to work with wool and therefore they understand that not everyone can use, uh, or not everyone can and will use superwash, so they will be hand washing the blanket, which is fine. There is nothing wrong with people who hand wash. As I've said many times, I work with acrylics primarily because mine that I normally make are for uh, children, and children are messy. And so I make things that can go into the washing machine because most parents don't have time to hand clean the toy that their munchkin has, you know, drug through mud or thrown up on or various other things that munchkins are prone to doing. Um, for me, it really doesn't matter. I'm happy to work with anything as long as it's not incredibly splitty or grabby and therefore a pain in the tail to work with. Okay, after this one I'm going to have to count again because it looks like I might have added a, a stitch on one end or the other. So, And that'll give you a slowly increasing rectangle if you do that. So one moment here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, 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 that the chain always is just a tiny bit smaller than the um, the rows because the chain is made with these tiny singles and the rows are a tiny bit bigger. Um, this is a normal thing. 
you get used to it as you work with yarn, but one end of that square will always be just a smidge smaller, um, which is fine. This is all going to be sewn to other blanket pieces, and therefore will just work themselves out. Okay. Um, news from the world of Mason. Let's see. I turned 39 this week, or this past week, I should say. Um, was Tuesday, and I don't honestly feel that different. Everyone's like, oh, getting old, getting old. No, this is not old. 39 is not old. Like, old to me is like 60, and even that is questionable depending on what, uh, how, how well you're doing physically. Like, a person who can still go out and run triathlons is not old, even when they're in their 80s. A person who, at, you know, 60 can barely walk up a flight of stairs, that's old. Um, I am continuing my walking, despite being away from home. Uh, I'm right by one of the largest parks in town, so I've just been walking down to the park and walking a bit there, taking pictures of bugs the whole way, because of course I am. Um, I will be going out to a uh, place to eat tonight as my birthday dinner, we're finally getting around to that because, you know, life has been busy. I worked all week, except I did not work Friday because um, Friday I was coming here, getting set up on the Wi-Fi, etc., and didn't get much sleep. I actually um, made some really poor choices uh, because... I knew that I had to be awake by 8 to make it to the uh, this apartment by 9. I don't normally get up that early at all. I normally get up at noon. Um, so I decided instead of forcing myself to try and wake up and get up, I would just stay awake and then I would uh, just come over here and I would sleep after. Well, I had some other things I had to do um, that really couldn't wait if I slept through the whole day. So I decided to run those errands once I'd gotten over here and gotten everything set up. And um, so I'd also skipped my medication because, well, I can't sleep, so I can't take my meds because those, me those meds knock me out. So I skipped my medication and was running on over 24 hours without sleep and I had not been smart and I had not eaten so my blood sugar was tanking and I ended up having a very, very bad uh, response to all of that while driving. I ran a red light and very nearly got in a wreck. The guy and I both spotted what was happening, slammed on our brakes, stopped before one of us could T-bone the other, uh, but it was not good. And I had to quickly uh, pull over, find a parking lot somewhere, and grab something to eat so that I could be a little safer. I did manage to get the errands run and then I came back to the apartment that I'm staying at, made sure that the animals were fed and then crashed out for about four hours. So there we go. So yeah, that was a fun little adventure. I make bad choices sometimes. Um so, the animals that I am feeding are 
slowly getting used to my schedule, which is not the schedule they were used to. Um, they get fed three times a day, so I break it up by, okay, I feed them once when I wake up for the day at noon, I feed them at 8 p.m., and then I feed them again at 4 a.m. just before I go to bed. They're used to a daytime schedule, but thankfully animals are fairly uh, adaptable so long as you are consistent. Um, I am working on getting one to stop trying to jump onto the counter and eat out of the bowl as I'm still putting the food in it. So I have, uh, anytime he hops up on the counter, I just pick him up and set him back on the floor so that it takes a little longer to get them fed. But if I do it consistently, I'm hoping that by the, uh, by the time that I'm done, he won't hop up on the counter to try and get into the food early again anymore. Right now, he's gotten to where if he sees me pause in what I'm doing and reach for him, he immediately hops down on his own. So, hey, progress. Um, let's see. All right. And that, by the way, is not a dig at the uh, people that I'm pet sitting for. I, I don't care if they let him hop up, but it makes it more difficult to make certain that they, that all of the critters get the same amount of food, for me at least. So that's why I'm trying to trying to discourage that behavior. Okay, so going back down our chain again. Okay. I'm trying to think of anything else in the world of Mason. Um, I am getting closer to being ready for my Munchkins and my spousal unit's birthdays. Um, I always start planning for birthdays well in advance of the actual day, like generally two months out, and their birthdays are all in September, um, because I am the person I am. I created a spreadsheet so I can keep track of what has been gotten for which munchkin, and how much it cost, where we got it from, etc., just in case we need to return anything. Um, I always ask my kids, starting about two months in advance, hey, I need you to send me things that you're interested in um, for your, as birthday gifts, I do the same thing for Christmas because while I know my kids fairly well, there's things, there, there's things they're interested in that I have no clue about, mostly video games. Um, like, I... The games I play are all MMOs. I play them to be with friends. I don't really play video games just because video game, um, aside from my tour stream. And even that got started as a, oh wow, I've never played that game, what's it like? Well, here, let me do this stream and you can watch the videos and you can figure out what the game is like. Um, so, that's how the tour stream got started, is just me trying to share something I do love with a friend of mine. Um, and so when it comes to video games, like I said, I don't really know the games that the kids play. I try to keep abreast of what they're playing at any given time, but that's really more my partner's purview. Um, but, you know, if the kids... So I don't ever know what they'll want when it comes to um, video games or, you know, things like that. The books, books I always know what they're reading. Um, and then I try to get things related to that. Uh, one of the Munchkins plays d 
D&D &D with my partner and I in our gaming group, so I try to get things for him related to that, and then I try to get similar items uh, for his brother, because they are twins, and I do like to try and ensure that they both get a fair amount of things, so that's a big part of why I got the spreadsheet, is so I can keep track of what I got for who, um, and how much it cost. I know it seems weird to be like, well, I spent X amount on one munchkin, so I need to spend the same amount on the other munchkin, but for me, it just feels fair. Um, growing up, I was not the uh, preferred child, so a lot of times my uh, my brother would get really, really expensive, cool stuff, and uh, even as a kid, you can tell, was this, was this cheap or was this expensive? Um, and a lot of times for kids, it doesn't matter, but if you're constantly seeing your sibling getting a lot of really expensive, really nice things, and you're getting, like, things that are not super cheap, but, you know, not anything like what your sibling's getting, and, um, and they're not even things that are related to your interests in any way. It, it kind of stings, you know. So I just try to make sure I don't do that to my kids. That said, I do miss the days when quantity was definitely preferred by the munchkins over quality, uh, because it was easy to just go to Dollar Tree and buy a bunch of small plastic toys, and the boys would just love them. Um, but they are, they have developed a little bit more refined tastes, I guess. Certainly more expensive, so. Um, that said, I did go to Dollar Tree yesterday and found something that was a surprise. I found fabric, the same kind that I use to make masks, which is 100% cotton in a particular a uh, fairly tight weave. It's not jersey cotton, which is what they make t-shirts out of. It is not uh, felted, or the, the type of cotton that is used for fleece. Um, no, this is 100% cotton that is nice and smooth, very small weave, perfect for masks. So I grabbed two that were very cute, and I like them. One of them has uh, alpacas all over it, and the other has just colorful dots. Um, even, even though my family is all vaccinated, we're still wearing our masks um, when we go out because there are variants that are infecting people even if they are vaccinated, and also because I at least um, help my elderly neighbor and she can't get vaccinated because she is very, very old and in not good health. So I would feel awful if I drug something home to her. And so therefore, I do not go out without my mask. Um, even when I'm going walking in the park, I keep my mask in my pocket. So in the event that someone decides to try and stop and talk to me, if we are going to be sharing air for more than a minute or two at most, part, and honestly, if, if it's more than just a quick walk by and nod, and I honestly still swing out to give them plenty of room when passing, um, I'll, I'll pull the mask out of my pocket and put it on, because... I don't know who's vaccinated, and I'm not going to ask, it's not really my place to ask, but I'm going to treat you as if you're not, unless I know for certain that you are, um, because I've got people who I'm protecting, and they're counting, they well, they don't think they're counting on me, but I'm counting on me to be able to protect them by not bringing them something that could make them very, very sick. Um, okay, so...
making progress. This is going a lot faster than, say, my plushie. Um, mostly because, you know, I don't have to stop and count. I don't have to do math. It's just 40 stitches, 40 stitches each row. Same thing. <clears throat> All right, so. That said, I probably will be cutting the stream short today. I'm probably going to only go about an hour because this chair is not as uh, accommodating as the couch I normally crochet on. Um, I'm having to crane my neck kind of oddly or hunch my shoulders to see. So I likely am going to cut it got about 15 more minutes and then I'll probably end the stream. But I don't know. I'm trying to think of what else. What else in the world of Mason is interesting enough to talk about. I went to the local yarn store that I haven't been to in ages, um, so that was nice. I hit the local bead shop and picked up a few of the things I was still needing for the charm bracelet that I'm making for my sister-in-law as her Christmas gift. Um, still looking for a charm to uh, express the fact that she is an author and that one's actually harder than all the rest like she is very much an advocate for Native American rights so one that had a white bison that was an easy idea um, she is a teacher so a apple that was easy. She's an artist, so a paintbrush, that was easy. Um, and then, of course, a charm for her spouse and one for each of her kids. You know, those are simple enough. Um, but finding one... I'm looking for a quill pen, is what I'm basically looking for. You know, um, but finding one has been hard. You know, I can find plenty of feathers, sure, but one that has obviously been sharpened and honed down to a quill is a bit more difficult. Um, other things, I did finish the local library summer reading program, me and my kids. We all got uh, coupon books as a reward, and those coupon books are good for multiple different items. Um, the most important one for us being a free pass to the Tulsa State Fair when it happens. Um, the cost of the fair is not super expensive for one person. I think it's like eight bucks a ticket. However, but if, if you've got a family of four and uh, are also buying tickets for rides. We regularly spend, you know, upwards of $200 for the fare. And so, plus the cost of food and stuff. So having that little bit of extra left over from not having to buy the tickets is always nice. I start saving up for the fare well in advance of the fare itself happening. Um, like, I start putting aside money for it, well, actually, right about now. Um, so that when the fair does happen, we can go without worrying, can we afford this, uh, without having to go, well, we can go and see all the exhibits, but we can't ride any rides, we can't buy any of the delicious and ungodly fattening fair foods, um, so we just try to put aside the money so that we can 
have fun without worrying. Um, and thus far it works for us fairly well, you know, so I think that we, we did not go to the fair last year because of COVID. Um, the actual fair didn't really even happen. What they did was a bunch of the people who sell fair foods or sell um, trinkets and stuff, the vendors came and they did sort of a almost art outdoor market where you could buy fair food and the various items that you can get at fairs. Um, but there were no rides, there were no exhibits, and for us it just wasn't really worth it. Um, the rides and the exhibits are, for us, the heart of the fair. Uh, the food is always nice, but the, the walking down the midway with your family um, and, you know, the kids getting excited by this ride and that ride and us waiting and watching as they go on the rides. Um, my partner doesn't like heights, so I always go on, you know, the roller coasters with the munchkin that does like heights. Um, and, yeah, it's, uh, it's just always been a tradition in our family to go to the fair, but it's okay. Last year, a lot of traditions got broken. A lot of things that normally would happen didn't so um, we certainly were more fortunate than many people have been neither my partner nor I were unable to work um, we both moved smoothly to working from home I was already working from home when it started so um, for me there was no real transition aside from my partner moving to working from home with me with me um, the kids moved to home uh, schooling online from home which thankfully this was at a point in their lives that they didn't have the struggles that a lot of parents had with younger kids um, you know, I just had to make certain, okay, did you go to classes today? Did you get your work done? There were some, there were some bumps in the road, but, you know, we got past them. We, um, we missed seeing family a lot because we couldn't go because, you know, we weren't vaccinated because there wasn't one released yet. And our, my parents and my spouse's parents weren't vaccinated. You know, but for us, it was largely just shopping became more interesting because we all had to wear masks. Um, we couldn't really go out to family restaurants, so we ordered in a lot of food whenever we wanted to eat out, things like that. <clears throat> but we weren't having to be out there working around people who were potentially infected. The people we lost were friends, and not even a lot of those. Like, neither of us lost a parent, neither of us lost a sibling. We were incredibly fortunate um, with how things worked. We're still, none of us in my house ever got COVID. Um, things were scary, but not not near as bad as they could have been and not near as bad as they were for a lot of people so we were extre extremely fortunate and we i recognize that we were effectively the middle class that you know got talked about a lot the oh, we're going to have meetings on Zoom now, we're going to uh, order out with DoorDash, Grubhub, whatever. We're, you know, we made adjustments, but life didn't hugely change compared to the people who were having to go out and work because they were essential workers 
and there was no working from home option. Um, there was no, I swear there's pants, oh it's this side you're seeing, there's pants and that's just my thigh, I promise. Sorry, I kept standing out to me that, oh look, there's skin. Um, but, uh, we weren't having to go and stand behind a plexiglass shield while someone who was refusing to wear a mask and kept yelling that COVID was a hoax screamed at us because they didn't like the fact that we were wearing masks. My roommate did get harassed once we had to go to a grocery store and my roommate has very bad asthma so has to wear uh, an N95 mask. It looks much more uh, intimidating than the masks that I wore which were simple 100% cotton and so they got screamed at by a person who insisted that COVID was a hoax and that they should take off their mask. Um, I was explaining to one of my kids yesterday that even after COVID is over, we're going to continue to wear our masks whenever we get sick or when it's, you know, cold and flu season because it's been so nice to not get the cold or the flu constantly, to not have strep throat over and over and over because people have been out and about sick and coughing and not covering their mouths and, you know, spreading germs all through the air. So when, if the pandemic ever ends, then yeah, uh, we'll, we'll keep wearing masks if we're sick or if others around us are sick. Just, it's safer that way. Um, honestly, we should have been doing this for a long time. People overseas have been wearing masks whenever they get sick for ages, and nobody over there thinks anything of it we could have done the same thing, and if we had been doing that already, then things would never have gotten as bad as they did. Things would never have reached the point that over half a million people in my country have died from COVID. Masks should never have become a political issue. But they did, and so that's what it is. Life continues apace. We'll make it through. Alright, so I think I'm going to finish out this row, and then I'm going to call the stream for the day. I'm going to go stretch my back. Um, and I should be back for my tour stream next, uh, next Thursday. I did not do, the, do it the past two weeks. Um, the previous week was right after I found out that my godmother had passed away, um, and this past Thursday, I just, I'd had such a rough work week that I just couldn't. Um, pretty much got overtime every single day. I uh, had a lot of really angry, frustrated callers who, I get why they were angry, I get why they were frustrated, but you shouldn't ever take out your anger and frustration on the worker that is trying very hard to help you. Um, but I get it. And... I don't know. It was just a really rough week and there were some other things going on in my personal life that I'm not really going to go into here. Even though it seems like I just share everything from my personal life here on stream. I don't quite do that, but, okay, um, so, finishing the, oh, I did finish this, or almost finish. It is a charm bracelet that I'm going to be using, it, it has stitch markers on it, those are all stitch markers that I've either had or have made, and 
yeah, it's going to make it a lot easier for me to uh, work on things and not accidentally um, forget to, you know, have a stitch marker handy. So hopefully I won't have the issues of, oh crud, I'm trying to work on this and I have no stitch marker and now I can't keep track of where one round ends and one starts, which is a problem. I was trying, my roommate was in the hospital, uh, I'm sure I've mentioned it, a couple weeks ago and I was working or trying to work on a project while I sat in the ER with him and I discovered that nope, nope, can't do it because I didn't have any stitch markers and I couldn't keep track of where one round began and the other ended. Um, okay, so swapping back to this towel. Alright, so um, I'm not going to just only work on that on stream unlike the plushie. Um, I will try to finish it and I'll try to remember to uh, show it on stream before I send it off to the people who are going to put it together with the other blanket pieces, but um, no guarantees. If nothing else, I'll get a picture and share it on my Twitter, um, which is... Mason Lloyd 6, Lloyd spelled with one L. Um, I'm trying to think. This video, of course, will be going up on YouTube as it always does. Um, and I should be back Thursday, early morning and or late night, um, to do my tour stream uh, where we will be continuing the Bounty Hunter storyline. So. Until then, I hope everyone stays safe. I hope everyone has a wonderful week. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to others. I'll see you next time.